Hello, and welcome to this podcast. Today, it's my pleasure to welcome Radan Kanev. MEP Kanev is a Bulgarian politician and a member of the European Parliament in the EPP group. He started his political activities as a political blogger in 2004 and has since continuously been involved in the topics of media freedom, transparency, and alternative forms of public communication. During his active political career, he was chairman of the Centre-Right Democrats for Strong Bulgaria and served in the National Assembly of Bulgaria. In the European Parliament, he is currently active in three committees, petitions, employment and social affairs, and finally, environment, public health and food safety. Okay, MEP Kenneth, you know about your challenge, telling us how to fix an element included or omitted in the Media Freedom Act. Thank you. Thank you very much for the opportunity. And yes, uh, right on the topic. Uh, after thoroughly investigating the, the Commission proposal on the European Media Freedom uh, Act, uh, first, uh, I must say that uh, I welcome this Commission proposal. It's a much needed and much awaited uh, legislation. Uh, however, uh, speaking about certain omissions uh, in the Commission proposal, uh, I can uh, not help but noticing uh, a very significant one. And it's a topic that I've been working on uh, for many years now, many, many years before we even started speaking at such a comprehensive regulation on European level. Uh, and uh, it is uh, the control on the media financing via European budget, European funds. If we look at the Commission proposal now, uh, we see a comprehensive uh, and quite uh, decent article on state funding of media. Uh, of course, uh, it is a significant problem uh, and the way that Commission approaches it should be welcome and maybe further elaborated, of course. Uh, but uh, there is uh, something very obviously lacking in the text, uh, and it is EU funding uh, of media, not only state funding, but EU funding uh, via uh, European uh, operative programs uh, financing. And what we saw in Bulgaria, but also in other, uh, my focus is Eastern European countries, uh, and uh, what we also see uh, pretty much in the Western Balkans, where uh, European funding uh, uh, is uh, used uh, in uh, different media programs, uh, is that uh, quite often uh, media receive significant uh, financing uh, for uh, especially advertising uh, different uh, European programs. Uh, part of the basic euro funding uh, via the, the cohesion policy or new, uh, uh, of course, uh, uh, models of funding like the next generation, uh, the uh, resilience and uh, recovery facility, uh, just transition fund, uh, etc., etc. Uh, and uh, what I've seen with great concern uh, for many years now, at least a decade in, in Bulgaria, it is an obvious problem. Uh, is uh, that uh, this uh, European funding uh, is uh, very much uh, channeled uh, politically with a great influence uh, from the respective ruling parties choosing the, let's say, right media uh, to, to receive the funding and to do this advertising. Uh, and what worries me really the most and here I will speak uh, straight for my Bulgarian experience, uh, is that media uh, who are uh, very much engaged uh, in fake news uh, and even outright uh, propaganda and dissemination of Russian disinformation cliches are at the same time receiving significant amounts of European funds to advertise European programs. So in the same online-based uh, agency or printed newspaper or TV channel, uh, you can easily see uh, on one hand the advertising of, let's say, next generation EU. And on the other hand, in the same media, uh, see outright uh, very blunt disinformation, for example, directed straightly against European climate objectives. 
And uh, I think that we should very clearly and very definitely address this problem in the European legislation because it's it's a matter of European money, European funding, uh, and uh, most of all, European priorities. So this is what I think we should definitely fix in this upcoming legislation. Uh, thank you, MEP Kanev. That, that must be great moments of schizophrenia if you're seeing <laughs> such type of ads one after the other. And obviously, um, I don't not being a specialist of, of the competences uh, of, of, of the European Union versus state competences. And we know that is a difficult, difficult balance with the European Media Freedom Act, uh, that, that the Commission can only intervene in certain areas and not others. Here, however, it seems that it's funding coming from Europe, so it controls whom it gives the funding to and under what conditions. And um, one could imagine that um, those safeguards that are there for national state uh, funding could be, um, you know, um, maybe also uh, apply to EU funding. Uh, and I think the, the the problems you raise are obviously uh, things that are worth raising and that um, one hopes the, 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 the parliament will be able to add to the European Media Freedom Act or the council uh, uh, in, in moving forward. Um, you're not on the right committees yet, uh, or but I'm sure you have colleagues that uh, can can take this on board. Um, and so one can only hope that uh, they will listen to this podcast and that you will contact them directly um, so that your point uh, can be um, amplified uh, in Parliament. I, I would say good luck um, in, in talking to your colleagues, but this seems like an easy point to sell to me. Yes. Thank you very much for your time. And I don't think we'll face problem with that. Thank you very much for the opportunity.